Good morning and welcome to worship at Haller Lake United Methodist Church on this, the fifth Sunday in Lent. Next week is Holy Week and we take this week preparing our hearts for the fullness of that experience, focusing on what it means to be God's people. As we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, our lay leader, Janet Snodgrass, will open us in prayer as I light the candles reminding us of Christ's presence among us. This morning, I'm going to share with you a Celtic prayer for you. Deep peace of the running water to you. Deep peace of the flowing air to you. Deep peace of the quiet earth to you. Deep peace to the shining stars to you. Deep peace of the gentle night to you. Deep peace, moon and stars, pour healing light on you. Deep peace of Christ, the light of the world to you. Deep peace of Christ to you. Amen. you to join with us in the call to worship. Our liturgist this morning, Kathy Bruni, will share the part of the congregation in bold on your behalf, but we encourage you also to pray with us at home. Across the ages, God has spoken to our ancestors through prophets. And come among us in the form of Jesus to speak directly and draw all people to God. Though we were not there to hear from his mouth, to see the cross, nor to touch his hands and side, we are not lost to God. God is here among us. Gout, Gout. we need not we need seek not out intermediaries to broker deals with God. God is here among us. God is still speaking. We praise God and listen for guidance. God of history's prophets. Write your ways upon our hearts. God of present revelations. Help us Help hear us you call. Hear you call. Hear you. God of our future. We worship you and gather at this time that we may be drawn ever closer to you. Amen. and 40 nights. Fast. 
Fasting with unceasing prayer, strong with you to suffer pain. Then is Satan on us press, flesh or spirit to us scriptures, God of our traditions, God of our experience, God of our thoughts. You reveal the way of life through the path of obedience. Inscribe your law in our hearts that in life we may not stray from you, but may be your people. Amen. The Hebrew scripture this morning is from Jeremiah 31 verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. <clears throat> the epistle reading is from Psalms 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. <clears throat> Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. <clears throat> Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing spirit. Yeah. 
That anthem is much more upbeat and vibrant and joyful than much of our scripture this morning, but if you listen carefully, you will still hear glory in today's gospel lesson, which comes from the 12th chapter of John, verses 20 through 33. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. These are words for life. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So it doesn't take a genius to realize that we know more about human anatomy than the ancient Israelites. So it's important for us to realize that what they thought was the function of the heart when God was speaking through the prophet Jeremiah and says, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. They didn't know anatomy, and they didn't quite know what the brain did and what the heart did. They knew a serious injury to either usually resulted in death, but they knew nothing of nerve endings and synapses and other things that, to be honest, I don't really know much about either. Unlike Jeremiah, the Israelites, and much of the ancient world, I do know that memory and knowing reside in the brain. Jeremiah, like his contemporaries, believed knowing and memory resided in the heart. So 
So when God says through Jeremiah's mind, I will write it on their hearts and they shall all know me. It's about feeling the law in the way that we, it's not about feeling the law in the way we now sentimentalize the heart and the goodness thereof. It's about having the information saved away in our memory. God's people know God, and therefore God's people know God's ways. It's like Frau Alice said to my high school German class, I wish I could cut open your skulls and pour the vocabulary right in there for you. But I can't. But that's God's promise, minus the skull cutting. It's also important to recognize that we're reading about this covenant as Christians. Jeremiah's contemporaries would have heard the fulfillment of the covenant in the rebuilding of the Jerusalem temple that happened decades after Jeremiah shared this promise. As Christians, we hear of this covenant after that temple was already destroyed again, a second time. To the extent that Christianity grew among Jewish people, it was an effort to look for new ways of being after the temple was destroyed again, finding new ways to still see themselves as God's people. The Jewish followers of Jesus and of the first apostles saw Jesus as a way of accessing God when the temple was no longer there 30 years after Jesus. If we had read the scheduled epistle reading in the lectionary today, we would have heard about Jesus being a high priest, essentially a replacement for the functions of the priests at the temple. From a teaching written after Rome obliterated that temple. Now, that's a little too supersessionist for me with my historical lens, but it seems to have brought comfort to some of those who were feeling the absence of the temple rituals and the ritual bearers. Regardless, Jesus is God's way of being accessible to us. God's way of saying, I know what it's like to be a person. As Christians, we see Jesus' presence, ministry, death, and resurrection as a turning point. Just as a seed has to die so that new life can spring forth, Jesus had to die so that we could have new life for ourselves, so that we could make that new life abundant and God's love available for all. It was not a one-time event that Hocus Pocus changed everything for all time. That denies Jesus' incarnation. The Word was God, and the Word became flesh, an example of how humanity can be perfectly bound with God. God's desire for humanity from the beginning of time. If Jesus was to be fully human, he had to fully experience death. It is the only way to endure the fullness of human experience. And that is part of what God is doing, hanging on the cross. That covenant God speaks of in Jeremiah is renewed reworked, reinvented time and time again. We work to find God for ourselves. We don't need an intermediary. I might be preaching myself out of a job by saying this. You don't need an intermediary to have connection with God. But it helps that we have each other that we have community 
that helps us to see past our own short-sightedness, that comforts us when all we can see is pain, that teaches us lessons we couldn't have learned on our own. We find God for ourselves, but we find and know God together. We find God in our own experience, in our searching, in our grasping, knowing that God is among us. Not just learning about God, but knowing God for ourselves. No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Jeremiah says, No longer shall they teach one another or say to one another, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. This verse for me, I will write it on their hearts, is linked in my mind and my heart with Jesus' teaching in Matthew that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And here's the part about in Matthew. It's why it's linked to the promise in Jeremiah in my mind. On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. Jesus is saying the essence of all of the law and the prophets is to love God and to love neighbor. Realizing this is like having God's direction poured into our brains. We don't have to memorize the hundreds of details of the law passed down through Moses. In fact, in fact, we're not even bound by most of them. When we get to the heart of it, we are charged with loving God and loving neighbor. Now, that charge doesn't prevent us from making mistakes. It isn't perfect. And it certainly doesn't cover the ground needed when we don't realize that Jesus means all people are our neighbors. Christians can say they love their neighbor but miss the point if they don't realize that Asian people are our neighbors, that women are our neighbors, that sex workers are our neighbors. The list can go on and on, but that's a good list for a week when an evangelical Christian murdered his neighbors in a professed effort to protect himself from his temptation to sin. Murdered other children of God so that he might not sin. All people are our neighbors. And the short list I shared is a good list in a year where violence against Asians has gone up 150% in the pandemic panic. Now, for those of you who need a little time to visualize math like I do, that's double and then some, then a lot more. It's a good list for a time when Asian churches in our neighborhood, less than a mile away, are getting threatening messages on their property from anonymous antagonists. And we at Haller Lake United Methodist on our property are getting messages saying, go home China, and anti-gay tirades from the same person or people. Probably people who claim Christianity people we're supposed to call siblings in Christ.
And we miss the point too sometimes, not realizing who our neighbors are. It doesn't have to be as an extreme an example as what we saw in Atlanta this week. We need to see all people as our neighbors, to see that loving them is like loving God, and to remember that loving God comes first and foremost in our walk of faith. Love God, love neighbor. The two are alike, and everyone is our neighbor. This is God's call for us. If all of us who call ourselves Christian could get that through our thick skulls without God having to cut them open, we would know the fullness of God's covenant with us. So we take the time to face into the fullness of Jesus' life and death and resurrection. From the celebration of Palm Sunday to the depths of Good Friday and the promise of Easter, we see the extent of Jesus' power and love. If we do Holy Week right, we are looking with expectation for the fulfillment of what God has intended all along. Humanity bound perfectly with God. As we move into Holy Week, let us look to play our part as we seek to be perfectly bound with God. Let it be so. Amen. Friends, as a community of faith helping each other to know and experience God, we hold each other in God's love as we share our pains with God and we celebrate together the signs of life and love. We know because we know God and one another what needs our prayers this morning. I know there are troubles on some of our hearts. So what is in need of prayer today? Pastor Austin. Janet, Janet yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, Karen Jones needs to our continued prayers as she's looking forward to a fairly complicated surgery on her foot where several bones were fractured. It's an ongoing health concern and uh, new steps in recovery. We hold Karen in God's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Other things. Pastor Austin, this is Barb. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, continued prayers for Dee Turley. And um, I haven't heard from her since Friday night, but at that point, they had moved her daughter in law, Lori into uh, comfort care. So continued prayers for the journey they're going through. So for those who don't know, Lori's had complications from uh, multiple medical conditions and, um, and, and attempts at treating them. Um, and now the best the doctors can do um, is to give her comfort uh, while she's still here. 
Um, so um, that's the, the Turley family is going has been going through plenty with Jack's health concerns as well, um, and Dee trying to hold it together for everybody. So we hold the whole of the Turley family in God's love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Pastor Austin, this is Michelle. Yes. I'd like prayers of Thanksgiving for everyone who came out for the church grounds cleanup yesterday. We had uh, Kathy Bruni, Carol Jager, Jim Fox, and Abby Wilson and Doug Manis all came out and the grounds look beautiful. So thank you to everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let the people of God say thanks be to God. You know that Sharon Clippert isn't always able to log in, so I'll draw your attention to um, the part on our um, prayer list, um, three down for Carlos Almeida. Um, um, a relative of hers who is acutely ill with COVID-19 in the Philippines. And we hold their family in God's love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. All right. Maybe we've got everybody. Doing a last scan through here to double check for any extra hands. Let us join our hearts and our minds in prayer. Holy God, as we look to the neighbors we know through you, the neighbors we seek to know better, the strangers we need to understand, we give you thanks for the many blessings you and all of your children have had in our lives. For the comfort of knowing that we are in it together with one another and with you, living this life seeking its fullness, praying that it be fully enriched with love. But God, we also have our hurts and pains that you know so well. And we worry about our neighbors that we have loved because of you. God, you have heard the prayers of our lips. The prayers for healing. The prayers for peace. The prayers for comfort in distress. The prayers for patience. The prayers for hope. You have heard the prayers of our lips, but also, God, we trust that you hear the prayers of our hearts and our minds. The prayers maybe we dare not speak. The prayers for which we don't have the right words. The prayers that are still finding their way to our realization. God, you have searched us and known us. 
God, we trust that you hear us, both in our pleas for help and in celebration of all that you have done and all that you are doing. God, be with us as we seek to understand the fullness of Jesus' humanity, of the life that Jesus promises, our connection with one another and with you. And so as we move toward your holy week, we remember the fullness of Jesus' teaching and the ways it's summarized in the prayer that you have placed on our hearts, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There are so many ways for us to give back to God. Primarily, it's in the very ways we live our lives. Honoring God and making way for God's kingdom. And we take this time to reflect on all that we have to give.
saddened by the atrocities and injustices perpetrated in our world by those who profess to follow you and by those who do not. We pray that we can become more like you and create more love and tolerance in a world injured by hatred and pain. Help us to spread your light so that those who meet us know we are Christians by our love. We pray in your name. Amen. As we go forth from this worship, this time together with each other and with God, may you go forth knowing God and growing ever more like God. Blessings on our way.
Jesus.